Guys, before this video starts, I want to tell you about this sick website that sells hella cheap NBA jerseys. The website is ringchasers.com. I copped myself a few jerseys on there a while back, and I honestly don't know how their prices are this cheap. If you guys want to get a sick deal on a jersey, make sure you check them out. Link will be in the description, and use code LQG at checkout for an extra 10% off. What's going on guys, it's LQ Gene. today I'm back with another video. So today we have for you guys NBA Legends explain how to be clutch. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below what videos to do next and I'll keep bringing videos like this to you guys. Also make sure to smash the like button, let's see if we can hit 100 likes on this video. And make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch all the new content. We are releasing daily videos for the rest of 2021, so make sure you don't miss out. With that being said, let's get into NBA Legends explain how to be clutch. I, I think Steve alluded to this the other, the other day. You don't think, you just react. And, and the key is, You've gone over these plays so many times in your head and you just try to put yourself in the best position possible. In that particular play, I was so upset that Chicago had come back because I thought we had control of that game the whole way and, you know, Steve and Scotty and Steve were fantastic down the stretch and I was so upset that they had taken the lead, the lead and I knew what the play was and I knew most of the times when the game is running down, the officials like to swallow their whistle as they call it. They're not going to call a foul, especially an offensive foul. So I knew they were going to switch because Ron Harper was guarding me. And I knew I was going to come up and I knew Michael was going to switch onto me. So I was going to just shove them out the way because they weren't going to call a foul. And the rest you know what? This is great. I'm, this yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to finally hear this from you. You've never admitted that before. What did I admit? I just shoved him out the way. But it wasn't you, a foul. Of course it was a foul. You shoved him out of the way. What about when Michael pushed Brian? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That wasn't no foul. No foul? No, no it's, it's interesting because a lot of people say, you push Michael Jordan. I was like, go in that locker room, because that's what all the media was asking me after the game. I was like, go ask Michael if I pushed off. Because to his point, do you think Ryan Russell? No, he got shook. This is different. No, 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 oh, no, 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 he you got thrown. That was going no, no, no. like a yeah, yeah. out of back. Kenny, yeah. I know you were going there. No, no, that was a shake. Oh, no, no, no. no Michael no, didn't no. get shook on your play. He got pushed. Brian Russell got pushed. He got pushed. He, did, he got okay. lost in the pullback, and then he got guided after he was guided. <laughs> I, 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 turn I, turn I turn agree. Turn I would say more guided. That was totally. a out and out. Always the key to clutch shot, you just have to have confidence. Because, from, first of all, when you're a star of a team, the ball's coming to you every night. But you can't ever lose your confidence. Because you got, you either got to, you just got to let it go. You can't think about it. Because, like, you're like, we're running a play for you, Chuck. We're running a play for you, Reggie. Okay, I'm on, I, I got to make this play. And I don't care how many I miss. I knew if you play the next night, you got to get right back up there. Visualization in sports is, is important in a lot of whatever you're playing. Uh, you hear it in golf a lot. You know, you're standing on the tee box and you're visualizing how this is going to go. When you're, you draw up a play and the horn goes and you're walking on, are you visualizing this is, because you kind of made mention of it. I knew they're going to come off. I knew Michael's going to be there. Are you visualizing every step along the way and saying, I know exactly how no. this is going to break down? Or no. are you saying, I'm just going to be ready in case? You don't, but you have to be ready because you don't know how the defense is going to play you. But, I mean, but Reggie said he knew exactly what was going to happen. you anticipate. Right. Because yeah. you, you assumed what could and could not go wrong. And that's what I always like to think of, you know, a couple steps ahead, especially on plays like that. Well, what if they switch out? But if they stay, I got to do no. this. What is, right. what is my counter? So you're always thinking, but look, I've always played the 3-2-1 game growing up. So that's, I always prepared myself that way of being in the backyard. Three, two, one, shot. You know, the one thing that I always felt being a guy who was supposed to take the shot, the guy who was supposed to wait and see if the other guy was gonna take the shot, I've been on both kind of spectrum throughout my career. I always felt better when the coach drew the play for me. And it was like, okay, we're gonna put it for you. And then, we want you to make it, but when I had to wait, I didn't feel as comfortable shooting the shot because I, didn't, I wasn't sure what he was thinking when he was gonna give it to me. Like when Steve, I think knowing that Michael said he looked for you, that made you say, okay, I have to be ready. But when, you, when they say, okay, we're gonna open the floor up and run a one-four set and let Kenny go one-on-one, -on -one, I felt better. If you say, okay, we're gonna run a one-four set for someone else and you're gonna stand in the corner and he wait, I didn't I feel good taking those shots. I thought Charles nailed it. He said, he said, you, you just can't care if you miss, you know, and you, you have to, and it's a really hard thing to do to get yourself in that mindset because what happens if you miss? Well, they're going to write about it. The fans are going to talk about it, talk radio, all that stuff. You know, these days there's even more, you know, media outlets. So there, there's so much pressure and somehow you have to kind of filter that out and say, you know what? I don't care if I miss. 
Reggie probably missed how many game time or game winning more. shots? Yeah, I probably, I probably missed more than I've made. Michael, remember Michael had that commercial, you know, he talked about, I've missed 25 right. game winning shots. But, but, but you have to but have that. But that's what mindset. separate the guys, though. Like, you, I never, you know, as great a clutch player as Reggie was, he just sit there and said he missed more than he made. And I probably did the exact same thing, but I never, I, the, 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 I don't even think about the misses. I just think about the makes. Because when you get a chance, like you make everybody happy in that locker room, in your city when you make a game winning shot, you think about that more than you do the losses. The losses, when you miss a shot, you have to wake up the next day and say, okay, that's over with. Because it's gonna happen. One thing about the NBA, you're playing four games a week. And if you're a great player or a very good player, Coach gonna give you the ball most of the time. And I think the, also to add, uh, Reggie, the elements of before you get the basketball, like Reggie knowing. I think for me it was always which teammate was making the pass, which teammate was making the pick. For me, Grant Long, I knew the guy was gonna right. have a pick. There's some guys you know that was gonna not really set the pick, so I know I had to slow up. I think there's so much in taking that last shot. I think most great players, when they catch it, they're fine. I think everything is thinking about before you get to that shot. I know for me it was. How am I come off the screen? Am I gonna run fast? Is this guy stronger than me? And can I get open and what kind of shot I'm gonna get off? Because a lot of times you're running and curling. So now you gotta come make up a shot that's not normal, not natural. And for me, Steve, uh, like we said before the ball, I remember we played the uh, Lakers and you're saying who you want to set picks for you or do this. I knew I was gonna take the last shot and I'm thinking if I get double team, who am I gonna trust to shoot the ball? You know, cause just as you have to take the shot, you know, there's only a couple people that you know we were wanting so we ran the play in before the the play in the timeout and everything made sure that you know we had the guy next to us that did it and coach can drop a great play but knowing the Lakers knowing that they're going to have this if they jump the play who's going to be ready to do that and so a lot of times yeah I'm going to take the last second shot but in my mind too if I'm getting double teamed because of these guys I need to know who's on the floor so who wouldn't you pass the ball nah. <laughs> no, I, I gave the ball to Mike Bibby I made sure I told him that he has to have a move I tried to fake and drive to the hole and they would know that and you know wanted to make sure he was there sometimes it's not a clutch jumper uh, that, that tells the tale Sometimes it's at the free throw line. How, Shaq, how much pressure did you feel at the free throw line when you knew, knew they were going to send you to the line? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I, I would like to say that I've never been a clutch shooter in the league, but uh, on Xbox, I'm deadly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, and being a fan and, and um, watching the game, I've always seen clutch shooters want the ball. I can remember an instance where uh, Charles was playing the Spurs, and I don't know what play they called up, but I could see Charles get the ball and look up at the clock, and you could tell that he wanted it. And he wanted it, and he knew he was going to uh, win the game. So he took a couple dribbles, he stepped back, and he shot the jumper on David Robinson. And you could look in his eyes that he knew the shot was going to go, and he wanted it. So most clutch shooters that I've seen, Reggie, Steve, all the guys on this panel, except myself, they wanted the ball. <laughs> you know what? Well, I think I'm sorry to cut him off because there's a difference. There's Why'd you do it then? Plays. No, there's <laughs> <laughs> You hate to cut him yeah. off, but what'd you do? Clutch <laughs> plays, and it, not just clutch shots. Right, because yeah. knowing when guys are taking a shot to get the tap dunk, to get the alley-oop dunk, things that you've done, those are clutch moments yeah. that you say, I'm going to be involved in. So it's all the same mindset. I'm going to be involved in this moment. You, you know, know? And, and here's the thing, too, uh, and I want to close with this with you, Charles. Pat Riley, I remember he told me once, you know, he said in basketball, in playoff basketball, there are two things. There's winning and there's misery. And you hit the shot over David Robinson. John Stockton hit the shot over you. Yeah. And so you've been on, you were right there on both ends of that thing. How do you describe the difference in the emotions of having a guy do it to you and you putting your team over the top? It's, it's, it's a great feeling for everybody when you hit it. You know, you know we talked a little bit about game seven. The one thing that people don't realize, like, when you lose at the end of the season, it's such a finality, such a like, wow, our season's over. Every season that you don't win a championship is depressing. depressing. And, it de and, the deep and, and the deeper you go in the playoffs, hurts more. it hurts more. It hurts more. I mean, it hurts more. You but did it, you it, ever, it, did it, you it, ever, Reg, did you ever, like, go to sleep and wake up hoping that it was a dream that you lost? I, I still think that to this day. <laughs> there, there's so many the games thing. I think about 
You know, I was game like, seven I was like, versus someone... the Knicks in '94. Game seven against. Oh, I used to go to sleep. And now i Don't even try that. <laughs> we, we, you think about those things Stop because it. it's our the chances series? you get. No way. But it was game seven. You think no about way. those things. Right. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Right. If I, I will. That night, I used to go to sleep. I said, maybe if I go to sleep and I wake up, it might not really happen yet. And you wake up. <laughs> you wake up and be like, no, no practice. But see, there. I don't. But I think the hardest thing after those games is trying to get to sleep. Mm. Yeah. Cause you sit yeah. there, man. And you can't watch TV because everybody's talking about the, the game is over. And everyone's talking about you. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. They're and talking it, about you. T tougher to sleep before that big game or after that big game if you lose it? For me, before. So that's it for this video, guys. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. Like I said at the beginning, we're releasing daily videos for all of 2021, so you don't want to miss out. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.